A hundred days enough to judge the performance of an administration? Or is it too early in the day to do so? On Wednesday, September 6, President Bola Tinubu led administration marked 100 days in office, same for governors in 28 states across the country. What sort of foundations are being laid by the decisions, policies, and actions so far taken? How have they impacted the lives of Nigerians? Do the policies and actions so far taken inspire confidence that these governments know what they are doing? and that they can get the country out of the woods? This is our first hot topic on The Breakfast this morning. The Economic Community of West African States, ECOWAS, is set to launch the joint platform for advancing cybersecurity in West Africa. And that event will be taking place in Abuja today, Tuesday. We'll be focusing on this as our second hot topic. We'll also be taking a look at the front pages of some national dailies to find out what headlines made it there. Stay with us. Our analysts will be joining us on Off the Press. Hello, good morning, and welcome to The Breakfast. I am Maureen Menon Wezigwe. It is a technophile edition of the program. Today, we talk a little bit of tech. So how is tech impacting your life? Is it controlling your life? Are you in charge of your life? Tech is supposed to add some value, but it's not supposed to take over the totality of your being. Some people are so addicted to their gadgets that they can't do one hour without their phone or television. Are you one of them? Can you pass the test? If I were to put it to you right now, that you are a phone addict, you're a tech addict, you can't do without your phone for one hour. Can you pass the test? All right, so let's put you to the test. Let's find out if you are addicted to technology. How would your life be if Google were to shut down today completely? Can you function effectively? Well, find out for yourself. Do you find out for yourself? So good to have you join us again today on The Breakfast. We have a lot for you today, as I've already given you our two teasers. Right now, let's go straight to top trending. The first, Enugu State Government announced on Monday that the United Kingdom government has approved a visa center for the state to facilitate visa applications by residents of the Southeast region. Secretary to the state government, Professor Chidiabere Onya, in his announcement stated that the center would strengthen ties between the state, Nigeria, and the UK. Onya recalled that the visa center was part of Governor Peter Mba's request during the visit to the government house in Ugu by the UK High Commissioner to Nigeria, Dr. Richard Montgomery, on, in June this year. Ahanez Ndibu also made similar requests when the High Commissioner visited its National Secretariat in Enugu last June. Onya further disclosed that the government received the news of the visa center with delight and satisfaction, stressing that it will further enhance economic partnership and cultural exchanges between Enugu State and the United Kingdom. The government called on the people, especially those residing in the Southeast, to avail themselves of the opportunity provided to file their visa applications in the state, saying the government would ensure improved security both to residents and visitors carrying on businesses in the state. He reiterated that the state was open for business and investment more than ever before. Okay, so there you have the first top trending. We'll go to our second top trending. Well, the government of Abia State has reunited 22 rescued pregnant girls with their families. Well, after rehabilitation, the Abia State government has reunited the 22 girls 
Uh, the girls were rescued in June from Mma Charity and Social Mothers Rehabilitation Center, Umunkwei Mbosi, in Isia Langwa South Local Government Council in Abia State. The girls were freed by soldiers of the 14th Brigade Nigeria Army based at Ohafia following a tip-off bill while allegedly awaiting deliveries of their babies. The girls were at various stages of pregnancy during their rescue from the center and were thereafter, on the directive of the state government, taken to Madonna College Medical Center, Olokoro, near Umuahia, the state capital, for medical care, rehabilitation, and counseling. There you have the picture of the girls there. Speaking at the weekend while reuniting with their families, the State Commissioner for Women, Affairs and Poverty Alleviation, Mrs. Ngozi Felix, said the exercise followed completion of necessary care. The commissioner who was represented by the director in charge of the ministry, Mrs. Onwoka Nenaya, said the government considered it necessary to reunite the girls with their families after rehabilitation. She also enjoined their families and communities to show them love, devoid of stigmatization or discrimination. Speaking on behalf of the girls, blessing Otonye, who lost her twins during the rehabilitation, thanked the state government and management of the college for their care, promising to show an act that lead to, well, led to her admission at the charity home. That's a very sad looking picture there, very gory, very, un very uh, unpleasant to see. And we continue to hear stories of girls being, you know, trafficked or camped for baby factory, or b camped in baby factories, having babies by men who they are not married to. And these babies upon delivery are sold to people illegally. And these sort of things must, must stop. They just, we just have to find a way to stop this. And the top uh, trending is um, the third top trending, UAE lift visa ban on Nigerians after Tinubu's meeting. The United Arab Emirates has lifted its ban, the visa ban, imposed on Nigerian travelers. The decision was reached after President Bola Tinubu met with Mohammed bin Zad al Nayan, the UAE president, in Abu Dhabi on Monday. Ajirin Gulali, the presidential spokesperson, said in a statement that Etihad Airlines and Emirates Airlines are to immediately resume flight schedules, uh, schedules into the country and out of the country without any further delay. He explained that an agreed framework has been established in recognition of President Tinubu's economic development diplomacy drive and proposals presented to his counterpart which will involve several billions of U.S. dollars worth of new investments into the Nigerian economy across multiple sectors, including defense, agriculture, and others by the investment arms of the government of the United Arab Emirates. Well, since 2021, the UAE and Nigeria have been engaging in a diplomatic row over issues involving flight allocations and travel bans. In December 2021, the UAE banned airlines from airlifting Nigerian passengers into the Emirates, claiming the ban was due to the surge in COVID-19 cases. Before the travel ban, UAE's General Civil Aviation Authority had approved a slot of three weekly flights from Nigeria to Sharjah Airport. The single flight was approved for air peace and in retaliation to the UAE's treatment, treatment of air peace, the federal government dropped the Emirates slots from 21 to 1. The move made the Dubai-based airline suspend all its flights to Nigeria. And in October 2022, the UAE imposed a visa ban on Nigerians after a diplomatic row. Well, it's good to see an end to this diplomatic row. I'm sure those who do businesses in Dubai and those who usually love to go to Dubai for their holidays, will be very happy to know that they can now travel to Dubai as it used to be the case. I mean, we know that many Nigerians travel to Dubai. They love going to Dubai. Dubai is a beautiful tourist destination for many people. So those who um, have had to cancel or, well, compulsorily their holidays because of that are now happy. And this happened yesterday. 
So good news to you and uh, congratulations to the Nigerian government. And I hope to see uh, Peace Airlines doing more than one slot. I'm not yet sure what the details of that are right now. How many uh, times will uh, Peace Airlines be going to Dubai every week? I'm not sure of the details, but at least the row is over. Stay with us. We'll be back with Up the Press. You want to know what are the stories that made it to the front pages of some national dailies? Remember, our analysts will be joining us then. Chris Kendo Wando will be joining us on Up the Press. Stay with us.